How's it going guys? Welcome to another 10 minute tutorial. This one is really cool. We're going to be using geometry nodes to create this really cool kind of sci-fi weird looking meta ball animation, uh, but they're not actually meta balls because you can't use them in geometry nodes. So we're going to find a really cool workaround, animate it, loop it, create a simple scene around it. And from start to finish, it's going to take us only around 10 minutes to make. It's very simple, but it's super cool and effective. So we're going to get into that right after this quick shout out. Welcome to Real-Time Materials, a collection of customizable procedural materials compatible with Eevee and Cycles. With over six years of experience, I have created an add-on currently containing 240 materials across 14 surface categories. This add-on will speed up your workflow, allowing you to stay creative while maximizing your artistic output. You might be thinking, what about image textures? Image textures are easy to set up, but don't give you any control. Real-time materials are loaded with custom properties, giving you the freedom to change roughness, color, and all kinds of patterns. You can change the shape of wood, the direction of cloth weave, and the size of scratches, among many other parameters. Even if you already know how to make procedural materials, imagine the time you will save if you could apply those materials in one easy click. All right, so this is the scene that we are going to be uh, finished with by the end of this tutorial. Here it is without the volume here, much uh, pretty clear. And you can get this project file right now on Patreon, along with all the other really cool things on the Patreon. You can check that out linked in the description. Uh, but let's go ahead and dive right into how to make this. All right, shift A, and we're going to go ahead and get a torus. And then right down here, we're going to go on a 24 and 6. And then we're just going to go ahead and rotate it by 90 degrees. And this is going to be our setup. Let's go ahead and get in a icosphere and we're going to subdivide him and shade smooth and he'll be there just for composition. Let's click on this guy and go here to geometry nodes. I'm going to go ahead and delete this window, delete this window and get in the geometry nodes editor. So let's click new in the geometry nodes editor. And then I'm going to go ahead and get an instance on points. Plop the instance on points there and get in a icosphere and plug that into instance. And then I'm going to go ahead and give it two subdivisions and bring down their scale. And there's our composition, but we need to be able to animate the scale to create that illusion. So let's go ahead and get in a map range. Y'all saw me almost got a color ramp there. Habit. All right, and let's go ahead and get in a noise texture and plug that into value. So now what we can do is play with this two min and two max to get in this look. So now we have this already. It's looking really cool. It's looking really nice. Bring the detail to zero and the scale to one. And if you go here to 4D, you'll be able to animate this. Now my map range is a little too extreme. So let's maybe bring it to something like this. There we go. We want some of these spheres to touch and I'll show you why in the next step. So right here in the modifiers, let's go ahead and add in a remesh. But before we do that, we need to get a realize instances node. So realize instances, and that's going to allow us to throw in a remesh on this. So let's put a remesh and then keep it on voxel. And you bring your voxel size down and that's going to reveal everything and you can smooth shade. So remember I mentioned metaballs don't work in uh, geometry nodes and they don't. If you threw it in there as a uh, primitive object or whatever, it would just treat it like a sphere. It wouldn't kind of glue together like they normally behave. So this is a workaround with the remesh and now they, they're they pretty much behaving um, like they are. I'm gonna get a uh, set shade smooth here and that's gonna help it out. All right, so this is the scene and if we go here to the W, you can see now it's animating in that really cool looking kind of alien look. Um, and this is gonna be pretty taxing on your viewport. So if it's slow, that's fine. It's slow for me too. I'm gonna bring my W to zero and let's go ahead and animate this so we can be done with the animation portion. So bring your W to zero and then I'm gonna go ahead and shift D. And let's go ahead and get a mix color, which I'm so thankful in the new update, they added a mix color. So I don't have to keep switching. If you've been watching my tutorials, you've probably seen me do that. All right, so I'm gonna do that, and then I'm just gonna go ahead and bring up a timeline right down here so that we can see everything. I'm gonna hit in to move that, and I'm gonna give myself 240 frames. All right, so now we have this. I'm gonna go back to frame zero, so hover over here, hit back arrow, and right here in the W, we're gonna hit I, and then bring your factor over and hit I. Now bring your uh, cursor to the timeline to, end, uh, to 240, slide this over, 
hit I, and right here, I'm gonna go ahead and give it a value of four, hit I. The higher the number, the faster the animation is going to be. And since this is a positive four, we need to go back to the timeline, go back to frame zero. And on this one, actually go back to 240, hit I, go to the end, hit back to frame zero. And since this, this one was positive four, this one needs to be negative four so that this is a seamless animation. Now if I press play, go to the end, we can see, yes, it is working properly and this is what we want. Now we can go back to layout and build out our scene. So I'm gonna get a plane and scale it up pretty large. Control A, apply that scale. And then I'm gonna hold down shift, click both of these. And then let's see, the biggest it gets, you can see it's intersecting. So let's go ahead and bring it up. So now it doesn't intersect. I'm gonna get this guy, shift D, R, X, 90. And then I'm gonna, just gonna bring him up and then bring him back. All right, so now maybe bring him to right here. Something like this. This is all completely up to you and your preference. I'm gonna hit the tilde key, which is right above the tab key for me, click front, get in a camera, and then I'm gonna bring it up, bring it back. And then I'm gonna hit G and middle click to kind of figure out where I want this to be placed. Um, if I press play, do I like how this looks? I think the color ramp needs to be, I mean the map range needs to be a little bit more dramatic. Um, so here in the map range, I want to make some of these pieces bigger. So create more. There we go. That's going to be much better and more substantial when we watch the animation go through. Yeah. Okay. So that's way better looking. All right. So now that we have this, I'm going to go ahead and make my sphere a little bit bigger. And let's go ahead and create the simple material that's going to go on it. So we're going to go to material preview, this button right up here. And then right here, we're going to click on new material. I'm going to make it black and then just a tiny bit of roughness. And we're just gonna call this GEW. All right, so here it's a bit more complicated. So in the modifiers, we have the geometry nodes modifier. If you've used geometry nodes, you know you can use the set material node. But for some reason, this remesh messes it up. It removes the material. So what we have to do is add in another geometry nodes um, tree Go back to geometry nodes here, click new, and then we can add the set material. Um, I researched this quite a bit. I don't know if it's a bug or just what, how the process works, but that's how you can apply uh, materials to geometry node systems that have a remesh on them. I can't explain why it does it. It'll just delete your material. All right, so now that we have the material done, let's go ahead and shade the, uh, actually let's go ahead and light. So what we can do here is shift A, and we're gonna go ahead and get in a uh, area light, bring it up, and then I'm gonna go here to a uh, disc shape, and then I'm gonna hit G by hitting G to move it around, and then I'm gonna hit R twice to point it. Cool. Let's go ahead about a power of 300, and then we're gonna bring our spread down till we get something nice and kind of expressive and cool looking. So bring that spread down to something like this and that. That looks pretty cool. All right, we will, we will run with that. That looks really nice. I'm gonna go over to Polyhaven and grab an HDRI. So for me, I'm gonna use the indoor and I'm gonna go ahead and find the auto shop. So if I just turn, search AUTO, it should come up right here, auto shop 01 and go ahead and download that HDRI. And then right over here in the world icon, we're gonna to go to color to environment texture, open. And I'm gonna to go to my desktop and navigate to that and give it a strength of 0.5. And that's really gonna help with our uh, reflections, especially because this is so glossy. It's just gonna make it look a lot better. Um, and that's really what we wanna do here. All right, so now that we have this whole system going, uh, we're gonna add our materials to the back wall and the front wall. Now, if you have real-time materials, I really liked in the basic section, the uh, basic cement. You can just go ahead and apply it there. Scale of one here, scale of five here, and then you can kind of bring up the color on that one. And that is really gonna look nice for just kind of a basic cement, nothing too crazy, but you can also go to the exterior materials and grab some of these as well, like the cracked asphalt, the regular asphalt. Those look really nice for this as well. But as you know, I don't like to make you guys rely on real time materials. So what I'm gonna do is we're gonna go to, we're gonna go to ambientcg.com and I'm gonna type in 
cement, hopefully that's spelled correctly, and I'm gonna grab this material right here and download the 4K PNG. Once you have that downloaded, we can go ahead and go to the shading tab. We're gonna click new, and I'm just gonna go ahead and delete these guys. Control T with the Node Wrangler add-on enabled. We're gonna go ahead and navigate to where that concrete is and get the color. And then I'm gonna give this a scale of probably three. That looks nice. And then this guy, I'm gonna hit Control Shift D. Click that number two and we're gonna grab the roughness. Go from sRGB to non-color, plug that into the roughness. Let's go ahead and get in a displacement node. And we're gonna go and plug it into the displacement of the material output. In the, right over here, in the texture settings, we need to go ahead and enable in the settings to displacement and bump. And we're gonna go here to the cycles view so we can kind of see this work in action. Um, and that space is fine. So what we can do now is take this guy, control shift D, click that number two and grab in the displacement, plug that into, uh, plug that into scale. All right, so now that we have this, I'm gonna go ahead and invert color so it's pushing it in properly. And then here on mid-level, we'll do 0 0.2. And then I'm gonna go ahead and subdivide my plane by 100. And then also, see how it's still relatively low poly? We're gonna go ahead and throw in a subdivision surface modifier on there, and that'll fix all of that. That ought to fix that, and you can see how it looks bad. So we need to do 0 0.02 on the scale, and that's really gonna fix that material. And let's do the same thing on this plane here. So I'm gonna click on this guy, hold down shift, click on this guy, control L, materials, and that's gonna do that. And there we have it. We can press play and see the whole thing. It looks awesome. Last step, we can go ahead and get in a uh, cube, scale them up pretty significantly, and then we're gonna go here to shading. Click new, delete this, add in a principled volume, add a density of 0 0.05, plug it into surface, sorry, plug it into volume. And now we're gonna have some volume here. We can even do 0 0.01. So there it is, a little bit of volume. 0 0.03 is pretty nice. And now, we're done. I'll show you our render settings and we'll be all done with the animation. So if you click on the printer icon, 1920 by 1080 looks awesome. We can go to this camera icon and I'm gonna bring my samples up to 500 light paths. Do all one on that, turn off reflective and refractive. And then on color management, we're gonna go here to high contrast and let's go ahead and render this. All right, so this was a 20 second render for me. So you can gotta do the math on how long that is going to take you. Uh, and then I'm gonna go with my camera here and bring it down a little bit so it works and bring it out just for a better composition. Uh, but all you have to do now is in the export settings, I would strongly recommend keeping it at a PNG sequence and then uh, pick your file location right here, render, render animation. And when you're done, you're gonna have a really cool animation like mine. Uh, so thank you guys for watching. I hope you learned some really cool stuff here. I love geometry nodes. It's such a powerful tool. Um, again, if you want to check out real time materials, check out Patreon. That is all linked in the description. Helps support the channel. Uh, and I'll see you in the next tutorial.